Okay. Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net, and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at our new workflow plugin for After Effects called FX Console. Now, this plugin doesn't create cool 3D graphics and titles like Element 3D, but, you know, I have to go get that every time I do a new take. Okay. And it doesn't really create cool energy effects like Saber, but sometimes just being able to work faster inside of After Effects makes a big difference. Like, imagine if you had four arms, it would look kind of weird, but think about how much work you could get done. Fight. So, let's go and check it out. All right, so to be honest, this plugin was designed around things I wanted to be able to do in After Effects. Small things that would just help me stay focused on what I was doing, and over time, we built these utilities into the plugin. So the way it works is that you select a layer, and you hit a shortcut key, and it brings up the Effects Console tool set. What we can do here is we can type in effects or presets, and we can just hit enter and apply them directly. We can type just the part of the effect name. We can use the arrow keys. We can even use the mouse. And what this allows you to do is quickly apply effects directly to any layer. So for example, I can just go through and add the effects that I need. Now, the nice thing about this is that it saves you time and lets you focus on exactly what you're doing. Now, as much as I like going through menus or using the effects preset search, which is nice, but you still have to click and you have to drag it out or double click on it. There's just a lot of clicking. I like to use the keyboard as much as possible. Now, if you've used Cinema 4D or Blender or Nuke, they have a similar menu system that allows you to apply nodes and effects directly. So you know how much time you can save. Milliseconds. That's time you could be spending with your family. But in all seriousness, sometimes having to search for that effect can sometimes disrupt your focus and get you off track. And since we've been working on this plugin, we've even seen some other After Effects scripts that allow you to search through effects. But what it really told me is that I wasn't the only one that was sick and tired of going through menus all the time. You know, I just realized it's a lot like the Nintendo Power Glove. The Power Glove for your NES. Now you and the games are one. And it just improves your experience. Except it's cool like the one in Minority Report. Hey, wait a second. That guy kind of looks like Tom Cruise. Power Glove. All right, so now that you have a basic idea on how this works, let's go and take a look at how we can customize it for your specific needs. All right, so here's a pretty simple project. I want to do a corner pin on this video game footage and put it on my video screen console. So we'll just type in the shortcut, control space in this case and we'll type in a corner pin. And there it is, I can hit enter, and I can work with this. But here's the thing, the corner pin effect is actually kind of an older effect. I prefer to use an effect called power pin. So type in power pin, CC power pin, apply that. This is a lot nicer because I can move two points at once, and uh, you know, there's just a lot more options. But the problem is, I don't always remember power pin. I think corner pin. So here's what you can do. You can right click on power pin, add to favorites, then go into the settings. And I have the power pin effect here. I can add an alias. So if I click here, I can type in corner pin, hit okay. And by the way, you can change the UI color and you can also change the shortcut. So in this case, you hold down control, then hit space, and that'll bring up the effects console. So I'll go ahead, hit OK, and now if I type in corner pin, power pin actually shows up, and then I can hit enter. But what's even better than that is I can type in corner pin, right click on the old corner pin effect, and just blacklist it. And now it doesn't even show up in the results. So this just makes it a little bit easier to focus on exactly what you want to do. All right, so what's cool about this is that you can really begin to customize the search results based on the way that you use After Effects. So for example, if I type in LE, I can see leave color pop up, but maybe I really think levels should be more important. So I can right click, add to favorites, and now levels is gonna pop up a little bit quicker. What about a radial blur? 
Now, radio blur, this is the old radio blur. It's got a little bit of noise. It's not really as good as the CC radio blur. So what if we just come down here, right click on CC radio blur, add to favorites, and maybe we'll take the old one and we'll blacklist it. And over time, you can really customize the results and get it to be as streamlined as possible. Okay, let's go and take a look at another cool feature. What I'll do is create a new solid. And I'll hit OK. And I want to apply a fractal noise. So I'll hit Control Space. And I'll type in fractal. Now, this brings up the fractal effect, which is like Mandelbrot's and uh, cool things like that, but not usually the effect you want to apply. So let's do fractal noise. And we'll just add this as a favorite, which will bring it to the top. And by the way, once you get a few favorites in there, you can actually reorder them, which will help set the priority. So hit OK. So we'll type in fractal noise and we'll apply it. Now, I don't love the default settings. So what if you wanted to change the default settings of a specific effect, one effect that you always tend to change? So let's say I come in here and I set this to dynamic and I invert it and I like to set the complexity to 10 and maybe the scale to 150. And this is my go-to settings. Well, what I can do is use the built-in effects presets saving capability. So here's what I'll do. I'll select the fractal noise, come over here, click on the save FX preset, and we'll type in fractal noise default, and I'll hit save. Then I'll just delete this effect, control space, go into the settings, and here I have the fractal noise, and I can also put an override. So if I click right here, and I can start typing in the name. And so here it is, fractal noise default, the one I just created. I'll click it, and now that is set as the override. So if I hit OK, I can now type in fractal noise, and it's set with those specific settings. So this can be a really handy way, especially with effects that you are always changing to a different default. And of course, keep in mind that effects presets can also include multiple effects and even expressions. So I could add an expression to the evolution, maybe alt click, do time times 250, and this creates an animation effect. I could even add an unsharp mask, which I like to do with my fractal noise. It's just to sharpen them up a bit. And if I really wanted to, I could do a color vibrance, which is another video copilot plugin that should be favorited. Come on. And let's see here color vibrance. Now, I'm not saying this is what you want to do, just saying this is what you can do. So now if I select each one of these effects, I can come over here to the effects and presets, click save, and we'll just overwrite the fractal noise default, hit save, replace it in this case. And if I just delete all these effects here, I can apply the fractal noise and it will apply it from that effects and preset file. So this will definitely save you some time. All right, what else can we do here? Tell you what, let's go into the settings and let's take a look at our shortcuts. So the shortcuts is basically a quick way to apply any effect or preset. So maybe you wanna put element 3D in here and you can change the label to E3D. Maybe you wanna put Saber. Maybe your boss likes the page peel effect and he wants that to be applied to everything and you wanna be quick with it. Now, you'll notice a number next to the name of the effect and these are the shortcut numbers one through nine that you can assign. So if we hit okay, we can bring up the menu, control space, and you can see that one, two, three, we can apply any one of these effects directly and instantly just by hitting the number one, two, or three. All right, so let's say the boss comes in, he wants the page turn. So we'll bring up the menu, hit the number three, and bam, we are turning the page on this design. Let's say, for example, that you want a specific color correction. So let's type in curves. What you can do is right click 
and replace a shortcut or create a shortcut. So if you create a shortcut, it'll just add it to the list. So maybe noise, add a shortcut, create a shortcut. And that's in the number five slot. So here we go, five, and we're in business. Maybe glow should be there. And again, you could come up with your own system on how these are organized. You can also reorder them in here and uh, get them to work exactly how you want. And of course, customize the label. Now, we did limit it to just nine shortcuts so that you only have to push a single number key. Now, we do have a premium version of Effects Console with 10 shortcuts and it's $60,000. Oh, and by the way, there is a dockable panel called Effects Console that you can just stick wherever you want. Just lets you quickly get to the other functions. Now, speaking of the other functions, Effects Console is not just about managing your effects. It's also about managing your design progress. So here's a few features we built in to help you with that. So first of all, there's ability to copy to clipboard, save to PNG, so I can just click in here and maybe copy to clipboard. Then I can just come over here to Photoshop and choose edit, paste, and there's my design. But here's the thing, I don't usually like to leave After Effects. I like to work inside of After Effects. So we created our own gallery in Effects Console. So we can just click on the gallery here, open it up, and this allows you to go through the screenshots that you've made. Now, the nice thing about this is that it's a fully customizable window that you can open, scale up, and it works inside of After Effects. Now, it's not a dockable window because it's always gonna stay on top, and more importantly, we didn't wanna lose some of the functionality of it being a dockable panel. All right, so let's go and take a look at a few of the things that we can do. Now, first of all, where do these screenshots come from? Well, let's say that we come over here and we add a few effects, and what we can do is we can click on the snapshot button for Effects Console, or we can bring up the menu and click on the snapshot button here. And what it'll do is take a screenshot of the comp at the current resolution. So then if we open up the gallery, we'll see that snapshot in our list. Here's some of the different things you can do and some of the different things I use this for. First of all, it's nice to be able to see the progress or to see the direction of your design. You can also use the up and down arrow keys and it's just really nice to be able to compare design. So you can hold down shift, select multiple designs and just sort of compare them and maybe get a feel. You can open up this window a bit, give you some space. You can select up to four designs and check those out. You can hit the Z key and that will zoom in to full resolution. So this one is less resolution when I took the screenshot. You can delete them here. We can also right click and open in Explorer and this will give us direct access to the files. This works almost like a catalog of things that you can then copy later. So sometimes you wanna have more than one snapshot. So let's say I wanna take this, I can right click, copy to clipboard, jump back into Photoshop and paste this into my comp. So it's a nice way to be able to keep multiple buffers going. Now keep in mind, this isn't meant as a permanent location for your files, so you wanna make sure you're backing things up or saving them into other directories as you go because this is definitely just a temporary directory. All right, a few other cool things you can do. You can select multiple, export them, or select multiple and delete them. We can size the window down, size the thumbnails down. And here's like kind of a nice thing is that, and you can kind of see I just have some random, you know, designs and just kind of seeing the progress or just taking screenshots that I can paste later. Sometimes it's helpful just to see the progress of your design work and basically how it's getting worse. And then you know to take a break and then you come back and you just turn the computer off and give up. Another cool thing about this is just being able to compare design ideas. So you're not so sure and you wanna be able to just kinda of look at how they compare to each other. So I can hit Z, let's see. You know, I did some weird stuff here, did some different stuff here. 
and you know you're just not sure which one is really singing for you. So it's nice sometimes to be able to see things relative to other designs. The main thing is that it works right inside of After Effects. Now this next feature is gonna blow your mind. Oh, whoa, this is amazing. No, but seriously, what's cool about this is that we can move this over to the side, for example, and maybe we could use the tint effect to sample a color that we wanna try out. And this is nice because it actually accesses the real color. So maybe you have some cool color swatches or maybe you're doing a shot with a muzzle flash and you just wanna match the look of the muzzle flash across multiple projects. This can be a really useful way to keep consistency as you work. Oh, and here's another really cool feature. So I can either move this out of the way onto my other screen, I'll just close it for now. What I can do is solo a layer with an alpha transparency background and I can just screenshot this go into my menu and check it out. I've got a screenshot with an alpha channel. But what's even cooler than that is that you can actually take an alpha channel and import it back into your project directly by just dragging it into the project. And it's just nice to be able to try stuff out really quickly and bring assets back in just to see if they're gonna work without having to create a bunch of files on your desktop. All right, so this tool is really about helping you stay focused and helping streamline your experience inside of After Effects. All right, well, I hope you guys find this plugin useful. We're really hoping that this is a platform and the beginning of even more cool, weird, odd features that help make your After Effects experience better. This is version one of Effects Console and we've already got some really great ideas on how we can add to this and build on this platform. And as always, this is a community-driven project and we couldn't do it without your guys' support. I love that we're able to create free, high-quality plugins for After Effects users like Saber and Color Vibrance and many others. All we ask is that if you're looking to upgrade your After Effects game, check out Element 3D, check out Motion Pulse for some really cool sound effects. We've got some great model packs and stock footage. We really appreciate it. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Andrew Kramer from videocopilot.net, and we will see you next time. One sec. This is how you get fired up. You just, uh, you know, it's, just, it's empty. It's like a premium Sega, like a Sega CD or a Dreamcast, or, you know, except it doesn't suck. I found this in an old box. I actually only meant to keep the box. Effects Console is kind of like an expansion. It's like a rumble pack mixed with a Game Genie. Excellent! Game Genie! Does this kind of date me a little bit? My kids played this growing up. Now, this isn't a fancy plugin like Element 3D for doing cool 3D graphics. No, 